A very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, my name is Dr. Suvrat Arya. I am a consultant rheumatologist practicing in Delhi NCR. Today I will be discussing about rheumatoid arthritis. So what is the need of this topic? Rheumatology is a rapidly changing field and so is rheumatoid arthritis. We need to update ourselves with latest diagnosis and management. We should know when to suspect and how to diagnose extra articular manifestations and we should be well abreast with the rapidly changing therapeutic modalities. So coming to the introduction, rheumatoid arthritis is a systemic autoimmune disease. This systemic word is very important here because though the predominant involvement of joints is the one which brings the patient to the doctor, but it is actually a multi-system disease. We should never forget that a patient of rheumatoid arthritis can have a lot of extra articular manifestations which we are going to discuss later on. It is a symmetric inflammatory peripheral polyarthritis. This sentence more or less describes what rheumatoid arthritis is. Symmetric means symmetry of joints affected on both the sides of the body. That means left and right side. So, if right elbow is affected and left elbow is affected, that means it is symmetric. But what if, if the patient has the fifth metacarpophalangeal joint and third metacarpophalangeal joint, should we call it symmetric then? Yes, it will be called as symmetric because when the small joints of hand and feet are there, which are more than one in number, then the region of the joint matters and not the exact matching of the joint. So. If metacarpophalangeal joint on one side is affected and on the other side is affected, irrespective of the position of that joint, it will be called as symmetric arthritis only. Inflammatory means the five cardinal signs of inflammation. That is the pain, the swelling, the redness, the warmth and the loss of function. And as we all know, it is a predominant peripheral arthritis with axial skeleton involvement being very rare. Though cervical spine can get involved later in disease, but it is predominantly a peripheral disease. Etiology is unknown and unclear, but there are a lot of hypotheses why it occurs and there is evidence supporting each hypothesis why rheumatoid arthritis develops. Now the last line here is very important that joint destruction leads to loss of physical function and inability to carry out tasks of daily living. So, it is very important to diagnose rheumatoid arthritis early and treat aggressively. Rheumatoid arthritis is the most common inflammatory arthritis. If I talk of arthritis in general, maybe osteoarthritis is the commonest one, but of the inflammatory group, RA is the most common. It affects 0.5 to 1% of the general population, which will account to a huge number especially in country as India where we have a huge population. Some ethnic groups like Pima Native Americans can have up to 10 times higher the incidence of RA as compared to the other population. Talking of age group, the most common age group affected is 40 to 60 years of age and like all other autoimmune diseases, females are much more affected than males to the tune of 2 to 3 times more than the females. The lifetime risk of developing rheumatoid arthritis is 3.6% in women and 1.7% in men. Now, explaining the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis, let us go and see what happens in rheumatoid arthritis and then go back and see how it is happening. So here in this image, you can see the image is half showing healthy joint and half is showing the rheumatoid arthritis affected joint. The primary, the basic pathology occurs in the synovium. Synovium is the one which is inflamed and hyperplastic in rheumatoid arthritis. It gets studded with inflammatory cells and becomes hyperplastic. When it becomes hyperplastic and inflamed cells are there, it starts secreting excess synovial fluid which leads to distension and swelling of the joint and warmth also. This hyperplastic synovium is known as panus. This panus erodes and eats away the cartilage and the bone. So there is thinning of the cartilage and there is bony erosions. When this inflammation goes out of the joint, it also affects the tendons and the muscles which are present nearby the joint 
and leads to inflammation of all these structures. So, what are the various risk factors which know which predispose to development of rheumatoid arthritis? The first is the familial and genetic, then comes the role of demographic, lifestyle, chronic inflammatory mucosal conditions, occupational exposures and inhalants and psychological factors. So, we are going to discuss each of them in bit of a detail now. If a person has first degree relative affected with rheumatoid arthritis that is either the parents or the siblings then the chances of developing rheumatoid arthritis is three fold higher. If a second degree relative is affected by rheumatoid arthritis like parents parents or aunt or uncle then the chances are two fold higher. So there is cl clearly a genetic basis when your relatives are affected by RA, the chances of developing RA in you is higher. So, there is definite a genetic basis. So, let us see what are the genes here involved. The strongest genetic predisposition for RA lies within this HLA-DRB1 region. This gene encodes for proteins which are called as HLA which stands for human leukocyte antigen. These proteins are involved in antigen presentation and are responsible in mounting an immune response. I presume most of you might have heard this term shared epitope. This basically means a small sequence of amino acids at position 70 to 74 in this region which is called as shared epitope and this is the exact region in the HLA-DRB1 which predisposes you to development of rheumatoid arthritis. Other genes are also known which are like PTP and 22. STAT4, TRAF1, PADI4 and CTLF4. Now